My name is Chimfum Naya Wandu, and I am a lawyer turned project manager, and I'm the founder of We Are for the Child Foundation, an organization that fights against child sexual abuse. So our, it's our goal to end sexual violence against um, amongst children in Nigeria. You have to start f by understanding or identifying what you're passionate about. You know, for me, I realized I was passionate about children, not only children, but I was burdened by the increase in a number of child sexual abuse cases. Like I said, I'm a lawyer. So that became a cause for me to fight for and stand against. Keep serving. When you serve your community as a volunteer, when you identify a problem and you stand up to fight for that problem, even if it's one person's life you're changing, you're also changing yourself. It doesn't happen in isolation. You can't change someone's life and you're not changing yourself. You're changing yourself. If you never had the confidence to speak up, at that point when you stand up to speak against something, you have confidence. You're developing skills by standing against something and fighting for something. You find out that you're developing communication skills, people skills, so many skills you don't even know that is valuable until you find yourself being called for different talks or even being approached by people to manage their organizations or you know to step into positions or roles in a, in a business or organization. In that way you realize that wow I've actually built something for myself over the years. Don't allow Nigeria swallow you. Don't think that there's no hope. Don't think that you will not come out, that all your dreams are gone, you'll never amount to anything. Keep dreaming and take a step. Take a step. Don't, don't, be, don't be comfortable, basically. Don't settle for the life you're living. Push to become more. You can be more. You have more inside of you. So push making the best out of activism. I hope I'm correct, but that was my understanding. And for me, it took me back to secondary school. I'm the last of two children. So, I'm not really the last, I'm the second child, but I'm the last of two children. And I remember uh, the first time, well, the second time I spoke on stage, I was in just SS1. I remember giving a speech. I wrote this myself, and the title was I Have a Dream. And in that dream, I was, I mind in that speech, I was talking about how um, I, I have a dream to be the voice for the voiceless, the hope for the hopeless, the everything, you know. And afterwards, everybody stood up applauding me. And I remember leaving that place, and I was like, yeah, I'm going to be a lawyer. That's it. I will be a lawyer. You know, and so that was it. I was like, I'll tell my mom, I'm going to be a senior advocate of Nigeria. I'm going to be a lawyer. You know, after secondary school, I came up with the best results. I was like, I'm going to be the senior advocate of Nigeria. I entered uni. And suddenly, I hit law. I'm like, I can't do, like, I, I suddenly hit the law that I've been talking about. That I remember telling my mom, my mom was like, hey, I put you there. If you want me to take you out, because I studied in the University of Kent, she was like, if you want me to take you out, you will come back to Nigeria and go and study statistics or whatever you want to study. So I was like, I have to sit this one out. So thankfully, three years, um, I did an exchange program, so four years. I came back, did law school, miserable time of my life, miserable one year of my entire life, the most depressing of my entire life. Went on to do an externship, practiced for one year. I realized that, wow, this law is actually not for me. Hmm, what do I do? I think we just have to like wing it. Let's just try, right? Um, anyway, I got married, moved down to Enugu. That was where the confusion set in. What am I going to do now? I started practicing law, and I realized I was not enjoying this. I resigned. My mom didn't understand it. I actually resigned, and I didn't know what to do. But then I realized something. I was passionate about something. As a five-year-old girl, I was sexually abused, and that gave me a burden for children. So I'm like, I'm literally burdened. Like, I, I, I don't play with kids. So that was it. I was like, you know what? Why don't I talk? About, why don't I push this? You know? Why don't I? And somehow, I started talking about it. Started talking about. With, um, children meeting people, asking questions, how do you do this? 
you know, I'm, I made new friends in Enugu. I made new, I met new people because I needed to learn. I wanted to learn how they, they've been volunteering, how they've been pushing for a cause. And somehow that, um, that was where the journey of this whole thing started. I realized something that um, Gandhi said, when you serve people, when you serve your community, you're actually serving yourself. When you build others, you're building yourself. So I'm a behind the scenes person. I'm very happy to organize TEDx. I usually organize TEDx in the street with my team. I enjoy it. I enjoy just, you know, and I just enjoy working behind the scenes, serving the community, either by fighting uh, against sexual abuse or by, you know, creating uh, or for us to like come together and have a conversation, something that would just make our community better. I enjoyed that. I felt like I was serving the community. But then my mom would always be like, Nana, you're doing so many things. So when you were saying that thing you said about having so many talents, I got it all the time. The all the time. Nana, you're doing so many things. What exactly are you doing? You're this, you're that. The other day you say you want to do fashion. And now you're not doing this. Let's forget, I actually did photography at some point in uni as well. So what are you? Who are you? And I'm like, ah, I'm, I'm serving my community. She's like, what's which money does service? You're African parents, it's not bringing money. Tell me what FedEx is bringing for you. Tell me what these things are doing for you. But somehow, I just kept pushing. Year after year, I'm pushing. Like I'm meeting, I'm pitching TEDx to people. I'm meeting, I'm writing to people. I'm meeting, like, I'm, I remember our first TEDx, we had the Gozi, um, Ezra Pesilion, and, and TEDx is the street. We've had me, major names. And sometimes I'm like, how did I actually approach these people, push for this? To organize the TEDx event costs millions of naira, but every year I find myself trying to lead in a team and push it. Obviously, I would never do this without my team. Obviously, they are amazing. But I, I found myself in a position where I had to like break out of a shell. Like I had to do things I've never done before. So what am I trying to say? I don't know what your degree is, but you have to serve. Like service builds you. When you build yourself, when you build community, you are actually building yourself. You develop things that you never knew you actually had in you. I didn't know I would ever pitch ideas to people and they would actually say, okay. I didn't know I would ever go to Baton at you, um, Baton at yourself and sit down and tell me, sir, I want you to come to my TEDx event. And you'd be like, okay. I didn't know that I would go to it because I have to like tell Dr. Ngozi um, um, as I say, I would want you to come to my event. And she'll say, yes. I didn't know I would have to approach Sam Sibitoro before an entire crowd of young people Shake him in the hands, look him straight in the eye, and be like, I need to invite you to a new state. And he's like, okay, give me a call. I didn't know I had that in me. I didn't know that I would be pushing, meeting executives. Can you please um, sponsor TEDx in the streets? I didn't know that I could take the nose because I have gotten the nose. So what am I saying again? I'll stress the audience. Service builds you. You can't sit still. What do you care about? Even if you don't care about anything, Serve, so, look for who you work with. You know, after so many years of serving, giving, because it always seems like Nana, you're always busy. Everybody, everyone knows me as Nana, you're always busy. You are always somewhere. But then finally this year, it just felt like there was an opening. I look into my LinkedIn account and people are like, hey, I would want you to manage this organization. I'm like, okay. I'm getting job offers. I'm like, okay, what happened? It was a consistency in service. It was the consistency in pouring out my heart without expecting anything. I just knew that I was learning something. I remember last year's TEDx event, I was, from the depths of my heart, I was tired out because I had pushed so much for sponsorship. I didn't know where the money was going to come from, but I was so determined. After that event, I knew that I was a different person. I knew that I'm not the same girl anymore. Something inside broke open. And I realized I was entering 2022, more confident to do things that I was not confident to do before. That's what service does. That's what volunteering does. You get confident because you realize that if I can do this, that means I can do that. If I can do this, that means I can do that. Again, don't undermine your story. You know, I was just telling a woman that, you know, God is such an amazing, an amazing author. You know, I see how in everything he was writing the story each year 
I was pushing for TEDx each year, I was pushing my NGO each year, I was doing something that my, my family members thought, Nana, you are crazy, like, ah, you need to calm down and stop, and just decide what you want, you're basically confused, you know. Each time I was doing one of those things, I was, there was a new layer of Nana being revealed, unveiled, okay? There's an unveiling when you step out of your comfort zone. When you're in your space, in your, this is all I can do. What if I said oh, all I could do was love? If I, what if I said all I could do was, okay, just fight for the cause of children? Why did I even think of TEDx? You know, this, this is, I, I think this is also the hand of God as well. So, um, I want to say that um, service, volunteering, fighting for a cause, reveals a side to you that you never, ever had known that you had inside, you know? It also makes you valuable to your society. Even if you think that it's just one person's life you're changing, something is happening there. I remember when I, I remember leaving after I resigned, I had to intern with an NGO here in Enugu, and of course I wasn't paid anything, and my mom didn't understand why her daughter would go to work every single day and no payment at all. But for me, I was learning, I was learning things, you know, I was learning a lot. So it's not all about the money. It's really not all about the money. The experience you're getting is so valuable. Finally, this year I had the opportunity to sit down and I was contemplating, what job do I pick? Because here I am, people are reaching out to me, people are seeing that I'm valuable. How did I get that value? I didn't get it from practicing law. In fact, nobody was even paying attention to my law degree, my certificates, no one cared that I studied anywhere. Actually, what they were paying attention to was my years of volunteering. They saw that I had skills. This girl has people skills. She's emotionally intelligent. This girl can communicate. This girl can actually manage a project. She can deliver a project. She can execute it. She can plan. That is value to my organization. And so, yes, that is it. I had on my table being able to choose. Okay, I can actually work here. Which one fits the greater goal for me? Currently, um, I'm working somewhere, and I'm very thankful for the opportunity because it's been a lot of lessons. And there's something that Jerry said, again, that I have to reiterate, that even when you're working with someone, serve. And that's my mindset. I serve. I'm serving because I need to learn. I need to learn because the way I've seen God write stories, I don't know what he has in store next. So I need to get myself ready in this phase for the next chapter. Because if I don't get this phase right, I'm not ready for the next chapter he's, he, he, he has for me. So each stage of your life is so, you must be intentionally, you must be intentional, you must execute accordingly. Because if you feel like you're in your comfort zone, you're not ready for the next chapter. If you step out, then you're ready for the next unveiling. So for me, my mindset is that I have to be here. I have to learn. I have to deliver on this job. It would determine the next elevation for me. If not, I would be here. But God is a God of process. I have to stick through this process until I come out the way He needs me to come out to get to the next phase. You understand? So, um, what am I trying to say? Ensure that in every season you are doing something. Do something. Learn lessons. It will be of value. It won't make sense. It really would not because I promise you, it did not make sense. I remember times when I was like, "What am I doing?" God, what am I doing? Like, which one am I? What am I? Like, ah, what am I doing? It just felt like everybody was just moving, 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 moving. And Nana, you're just stuck. And, you know, I just felt stuck. But I was not, I wasn't stuck, but I just felt like maybe I'm just indecisive. Maybe I'm really confused. But like I said, keep yourself, keep doing. Keep being faithful in what you could be doing. Keep serving. And, um, yeah. And uh, I think I think I'm going to end here because when I came here, I was just like, I don't want to take up more of your time.